to take a look through this um, recipe magazine and I have a glass of just plain ice water here I'm sure the ice will melt before we get too far into the video but And I'm sorry if this ruins it for anyone because I know some people don't like the sound of ice. Okay. So this is another recipe magazine from Giant. And this one is a little bit older. This is from April of 2019. And, let's see, this is all about spring fresh. Easy recipes and season's best flavors. So I think there's a lot of different things with eggs. This one is a make-ahead Easter buffet. And this here looks like a Easter egg cob salad. And that looks really pretty in the oval shaped plate and it looks like a decorated Easter egg. See with the little zigzag design there? So that's pretty. So this is the Easter Egg Cobb Salad. And this says, use leftover Easter ham and hard-boiled eggs in this holiday-themed salad. It also says that there's a video online how to make it. So for this salad, you need, um, for the dressing, you need one large clove of garlic, a half a cup of white wine vinegar, two tablespoons of lemon juice, a half a teaspoon of sugar, two tablespoons of Dijon mustard, two-thirds of a cup of olive oil, so that's for the dressing. And then for the salad, you need one bunch of asparagus trimmed, five medium radishes, five hard-boiled eggs peeled, one five ounce box of spring greens, three fourths of a cup of finely shredded yellow cheddar cheese, one cup of frozen corn kernels thawed and patted dry, and three fourths of a cup of shredded matchstick carrots, and one and a half cups of diced ham. So here we have steps one, two, three, and four. Let's see, it says step one, arrange the spring greens, then scatter the asparagus on a large oval platter. On one end of the platter, arrange the egg and ham in side-by-side -side rows. Next to the ham, arrange side-by-side -side rows of the radishes and corn. There we go. Radishes and corn. Complete with the remaining ingredients as shown below. And now I believe it's starting to rain, so let's see how that goes. So for step three, you arrange a few pieces of asparagus 
in a pattern on top of the corn. Add side by side rows of carrots, um, asparagus, and cheddar to fill in the rest of the platter. That looks really cute and not too hard. Contents here. Um, this is a roasted asparagus over herbed couscous. And we'll see the full recipe for that. This is an apple berry tart with cinnamon walnut crust. And over here is a honey and ginger glazed ham. And then we have a spring chicken stew with leeks and white wine. Vinegars for Salad Season. Check out our guide to vinegars and how to use them in spring salads and beyond. So this one right here, this is a champagne vinegar. It's the mellowest of the wine-based options. This vinegar is crisp like champagne and light enough to let salad ingredients really shine. And then this one here is a red wine vinegar, which is tart and slightly fruity. This popular and versatile vinegar is made from fermented red wine and makes a great partner for nut oils. And over here, this is a balsamic vinegar. This fruity, fragrant vinegar is made from pressed grapes and aged, and aged in oak barrels. White balsamic tends to be lighter and less sweet. And then this one here is apple cider vinegar, bright and slightly sweet with a hint of apple flavor. This vinegar is great for balancing bitter greens or veggies. Don't worry if you see a cloudy dark substance in bottles of natural apple cider vinegar. This is the mother and is formed from natural pectin and apple residue. Just shake the bottle to redistribute it. And here is a white wine vinegar, less sharp than the red wine variety. This vinegar is ideal for delicate greens and when you don't want to change the color of a salad. And then this one here is a sherry vinegar made from sherry, a fortified Spanish wine and aged in oak barrels. This sweet vinegar has a nutty flavor. And lastly here, this is rice wine vinegar. Both seasoned and unseasoned rice wine vinegar can be used in dressing. The seasoned variety has more flavor, while unseasoned is made without salt or sugar. And then it tells you how to make infused vinegar. Okay. In a glass jar, combine herbs, spices, or garlic with vinegar. Mild varieties like white wine or champagne work best. Leave the mixture in a cool, dark place 
for a few days, then strain and seal. The season's iconic ingredients think ham, lamb, artichokes, and carrots all have a tale to tell. Discover the history behind these beloved foods and find easy and delicious recipes. And here is the recipe for the honey and ginger glazed ham. I want the recipes in the the ham that keeps on giving. It's hard to beat a ham sandwich, but there are endless ways to enjoy it in leftovers. Let's see, it says, um, some ideas are in omelets, frittatas and quiche, mac and cheese and pasta dishes, soups and stews, salads and pasta salads, fried rice and stir fries, Hawaiian pizza, hash browns, and beans. Ever wonder why we eat ham at Easter? The tradition dates back at least as far as 6th century Germany and ham has been dry cured in the American South since colonial times. Pigs were typically butchered in the fall and cured during winter, making ham ready to eat in time for spring holiday. Okay. I thought this one looked really good. This is an asparagus dish. If vegetables could speak, asparagus would surely say spring. While it's available all year, nothing compares to the fresh spears that appear each April. Asparagus is one of the first crops of the season, and after a long winter, when green produce is sparse, seeing the tips peek out of the soil is a welcome sight. A short shelf life means it's best to seek out local asparagus. Look for glossy spears, tightly closed tips, and freshly cut ends. This looks really good. This is a roasted asparagus over herbed couscous. I'm sure I will think every single Um, let's see, this is prep time, it's 10 minutes, cook time 15 minutes, ready in 25 minutes, and it has four servings. You'll need a pound of asparagus, a tablespoon of olive oil, a 10 ounce box of plain couscous, a quarter cup of roasted salted cashews, a quarter cup of fresh mint, two tablespoons of minced chives, three tablespoons of red wine vinegar, and two ounces of feta cheese. So you preheat the oven to 425, trim the asparagus, and place it on a large rimmed baking sheet. Drizzle with the oil and season salt and pepper. Toss until well coated and roast it for 15 to 18 minutes until the stems are tender. Meanwhile, cook the couscous according to the directions. Chop the cashews. Finally chop the mint and stir into cooked couscous 
along with the chives and vinegar, season with salt and pepper to taste. Transfer the couscous to a large serving platter. Arrange the asparagus on the couscous and crumble the feta on top and then garnish with the cashews. And here it talks about colored asparagus. While green is the most common asparagus, you can often find purple and white spears in store. Purple asparagus is grown the same way as green and is also green on the inside. These spears usually taste a bit sweeter and nuttier and are tasty raw. And then white asparagus is grown without sunlight, so it doesn't produce chlorophyll, which keeps it colorless or white. It's milder in flavor and less grassy than green, and is best served blanched. Okay. Oh, moving on to carrots. hoping to put some lemons or some cucumbers in this water, but of course I didn't have any, so... Maybe we'll do that next time. So now this is, let's see, carrots. We can thank Bugs Bunny for the enduring link between bunnies and carrots, but enjoying this orange vegetable at Easter makes perfect sense. The holiday arrives when, in many areas, spring carrots are popping out of the ground, and fresh carrots are sweeter and more tender than those that have been in cold storage all winter. Here's a recipe over here for roasted carrots with gorgonzola walnut crumbs. Mm, they all sound so easy and really good. Cooking carrots whole keeps them juicy, while the caramelization from the hot oven concentrates their sweetness. Savory bread crumbs provide crunch and balance. And for this, the prep time is 10 minutes, cook time is 40 minutes, ready in 50 minutes, and serves 6. So you need 2 pounds of medium carrots, 4 tablespoons of olive oil, 2 tablespoons chopped walnuts, half a cup of panko breadcrumbs, a quarter cup of crumbled gorgonzola, one teaspoon of lemon zest, and two teaspoons of finely chopped parsley. So what you do is preheat the oven to 400 degrees. You line a large rimmed baking sheet with foil. Toss the carrots with a tablespoon of olive oil. Season with salt and pepper. Arrange in a single layer on baking sheet and cover tightly with foil. Roast for 20 minutes. Remove the foil and roast carrots for another 20 minutes until tender. Meanwhile, chop the walnuts. And in a medium non-stick skillet, heat the remaining 3 tablespoons of oil on medium-high, add the breadcrumbs and walnuts, and cook 3-4 to four 
three to four minutes until golden, stirring constantly. Transfer to a bowl and cool completely. Stir in the gorgonzola, lemon zest, and parsley, and transfer the carrots to a platter and top with breadcrumbs to serve. And over here it says, Carrots weren't always orange. The crunchy root veggies you love to snack on originated in Central Asia and were mostly purple, white, and yellow. It wasn't until the 16th century that sweet orange carrots were cultivated by the Dutch. Save time and retain nutrients by not peeling carrots. Just give them a quick wash and they're ready to be roasted. Gorgonzola um, says this Italian blue cheese is prized for its sharp, salty taste and crumbly texture. Okay. These look great too. See, I said I would like everything in here. All about artichokes. So, artichokes. This is a chef tip. While trimming artichokes, keep them in a bowl of water with lots of lemon juice so they don't turn brown. Let's see. An ancient symbol of fertility. Artichokes are fitting for Easter and spring when we celebrate birth and renewal. Find them year-round, fresh, frozen, canned, and jarred. Artichokes are at their best and often less expensive from March to June. And then it tells you how to trim artichokes. You pick off the tough outer leaves until you reach paler, more tender leaves. With a chef's knife, cut off the top one-third of the artichoke and all but an inch of the stem. With a paring knife, cut off the tough green skin on the stem and any tough leaves near the base. Cut the artichoke in half lengthwise. And then with a melon baller or a small spoon, scoop out and discard the choke. The spiky interior near the stem. Okay. And these here are lemon and garlic braised artichokes. Let's see. You need two tablespoons of olive oil. Four fresh artichokes, trimmed, halved, and choke removed. One tablespoon of minced garlic. Two cups of water. A half a teaspoon of salt. Two lemons. Four tablespoons of butter. And one tablespoon of finely chopped parsley. So for this recipe, in a deep 12-inch skillet, Heat the oil on medium-high. Pat the artichokes dry and place in skillet. Cut sides down. Cook for two minutes until browned and transfer to a plate. Now to the same skillet, add the garlic. Cook for 30 seconds, stirring. Add the water and salt. Squeeze the juice from the lemons into the skillet. Return the artichokes to the skillet. Heat to a simmer on high. Reduce the heat to medium-low. Cover and cook for 20 minutes until the stems are tender. Meanwhile, in a medium bowl, microwave the butter covered until melted. Season with salt and pepper to taste. Transfer the artichokes to a serving platter. 
Stir three tablespoons of cooking liquid into the melted butter along with the parsley. Drizzle the butter over the artichokes. Okay. A little bit about parsley here. Italian parsley, also known as flat leaf, is known to have better flavor for cooking versus curly parsley. Okay. And here is a lamb recipe. Lamb, let's see, lamb has religious associations with Easter and helps welcome the growing season. And these here are yogurt marinated lamb loin chops. Let's see, here's an easy marinade. Yogurt slowly and gently tenderizes the meat and it adds a layer of caramelized flavor when the meat is broiled or grilled. Let's see, here's some myths about lamb. Lamb has to be well done. That's a myth. The USDA recommends cooking lamb to medium well, which means an internal temperature of 145. But if you prefer medium rare meat, and many people do aim for 120 to 125 degrees Fahrenheit. Another myth, lamb is fatty. When it comes to fat content, most cuts of lamb are comparable to beef. However, if you trim fat around the edges, it can actually be the leaner option. Stick to broiling, roasting, or grilling to keep added fat to a minimum. And the last myth, lamb is strong smelling. Trim excess fat and avoid steamy braising. Stick to grilling, roasting, and broiling instead. Okay. Matzo. Okay. This unleavened bread is an important part of Passover, which honors the exodus of the Jews from Egypt. Because the Israelites left in such a hurry, there was no time for dough to rise, so they depended on matzo and faith. Eating matzo at Passover recalls this story and symbolizes faith. This is a savory matzo, um, I don't know how to say this, I'm sorry, brie or brie, B-R-E-I, but some are sweetened with sugar or honey. Let's see, delicious day or night, this simple dish of scrambled eggs and matzo is as comforting as it is to prepare. So for this you need five sheets of matzo, one large shallot, five large eggs, a quarter teaspoon of salt, plus more for seasoning, three tablespoons of butter, one tablespoon of minced chives, and one tablespoon of finely chopped dill. So you break the matzo into two inch chunks and place in a colander. Place the colander in the sink and moisten with cold water until just soaked through but not falling apart. Drain well and let stand. Meanwhile, in a large bowl, coarsely grate the shallot. Add the eggs and salt. Season with pepper and beat to combine. Add the matzo pieces to the bowl and gently toss until well coated. In a 12 inch nonstick skillet, heat the butter on medium until melted and foaming. Add matzo and egg mixture. Cook for two to three minutes until the egg is mostly set, stirring often. 
Remove from the heat and stir in the chives and dill. Season with salt to taste. Okay. And then on this side we have four more ways to use matzo. Like a toast as croutons instead of breading or make bark. Cover it with chocolate, toffee, and crushed nuts. Ooh, eggs. So, whether for eating or decorating, eggs symbolize new life. That's why they're a big part of Easter, a spring holiday that celebrates the resurrection while plants are blooming and animals give birth. And these here are mini lemon meringue pies. And, let's see, there's a video online of how to make these. Mint. This versatile herb is one of the first to sprout in spring and has a bright, fresh flavor that suits the season. Mint and lamb is a classic pairing. It dates back to the days before refrigeration, when foods from similar seasons were often enjoyed together. This is a mint and ginger syrup. Sweeten iced tea, lemonade, or cocktails with this flavorful, simple syrup infusing them with fragrant mint and spicy ginger. So for this you need one two inch piece of fresh ginger scrubbed, one bunch of mint trimmed and washed, three quarters cup of sugar, one cup of water, and a pinch of salt. So what you do is thinly slice the ginger and place in a two-quart saucepan along with the mint, sugar, water, and salt. Heat on medium until the sugar dissolves, stirring occasionally. Remove from the heat and let stand for 30 minutes. Strain the syrup into a measuring cup, pressing on solid. Refrigerate until cool before using, and you can keep it refrigerated for up to one month. Okay. are chicken parm meatballs. They're the perfect combo of chicken parm and hearty Italian meatballs. Each bite is packed with cheese and satiating protein. My kids go crazy for them. They look good, good. Let's see. So these are, uh, let's see. You need uh, one pound of lean ground chicken or turkey, two eggs lightly beaten, half a cup of parmesan shredded or grated, a third of a cup of panko breadcrumbs, three quarter teaspoon salt, half a teaspoon of ground black pepper, one teaspoon of dried basil, one teaspoon dried oregano, one teaspoon garlic powder, Half a teaspoon dried parsley, half a teaspoon of red pepper flakes, 25 small pearl sized mozzarella balls, and a 24 ounce jar of marinara sauce. So you preheat the oven to 350. 
combine the ground chicken, parmesan, breadcrumbs, eggs, salt, pepper, basil, oregano, parsley, and optional red pepper flakes. You mix everything together, but don't overmix. Then you coat a baking sheet with oil spray. Uh, form the ground chicken mixture into small and fluffy meatballs about the size of a golf ball and lay them on the baking sheet. Working with one meatball at a time and insert a small mozzarella ball into the center of each, reforming the chicken around the cheese so it's completely tucked and hidden within the meatball. Then you cook in the oven in the middle upper rack for 15 minutes. Then carefully transfer them into a pot with heated marinara sauce. Cover with a lid and simmer for about 40 to 60 minutes. Occasionally lifting the lid to stir. Sounds very good. Eggplant parm. Cheesy, satisfying, and surprisingly simple to make, this dish is a game changer. Feel free to be creative with toppings. And penne a la vodka. This creamy, slimmed down rendition is in regular rotation at my house and will definitely win a place at your dinner table. Oh, let's see. Um, so, I guess um, if you make it the traditional way, um, it's 800 calories and 40 grams of saturated fat. But this way, it's only 360 calories and only 3 grams of saturated fat. You need 14 ounces of whole grain penne pasta, 2 cups of marinara sauce, half a cup of part skim ricotta cheese, a quarter cup of half and half, uh, 3 to 4 garlic cloves minced, 2 shallots minced, quarter cup of vodka, quarter cup of parmesan, 3 quarter teaspoon kosher salt, one fourth of a teaspoon ground black pepper, one fourth teaspoon red pepper flakes, optional, basil leaves, optional. So you cook the pasta according to the package. Um, coat a skillet with oil spray and warm it over medium heat. Add the shallots and saute for six minutes. Add the garlic during the last two minutes and saute until soft and lightly browned. Reduce the heat to low. Stir in the marinara sauce and vodka, then whisk in the half and half. Simmer for 10 minutes until everything is nice and hot. Then mix in the ricotta cheese, parmesan, salt, pepper, and red pepper flakes. Mix with the cooked pasta and season with additional salt and pepper, parmesan, and optional basil leaves. Sounds very good. That looks good. Only 192 calories, 17 grams of carbs. And the um, traditional way would be over 1,000 calories and 110 grams of carbs. So that one looks really good too. Take five easy spring meals. These speedy five ingredient recipes celebrate the season's flavors in weekday friendly dishes. This is an arugula and artichoke salad. Sounds very good too. 
top this salad with, ro with shredded rotisserie chicken for a complete meal. So all you need for this dish is pine nuts, marinated artichokes, champagne vinegar, olive oil, and the arugula. Mm, this is ravioli with rosemary, butter, and mushrooms. To keep rosemary and other herbs fresher longer, wrap them in a damp paper towel and store in a plastic bag in the fridge. So the only ingredients you need for this one are a package of cheese ravioli, mushrooms, butter, fresh rosemary, and Asiago cheese. This one over here is chicken and cauliflower curry. Uh, you can use firm tofu instead of chicken to make this vegetarian. So, you need chicken tenders, curry sauce, cauliflower, green onions, and almonds. Mm, pizza. This is a breakfast pizza. So for this one, all you need is a frozen pizza, Canadian bacon, frozen tots, eggs, and parsley. So this is kind of different. Let's see. You so you cook the pizza in the oven at 425 and on a parchment paper lined baking sheet. You chop four slices of Canadian bacon and arrange them on top of the pizza. Then you get a package of frozen potato tots and put them on the pizza. Bake it for 15 to 20 minutes. Now you crack four eggs directly onto the pizza, spacing them out evenly, and bake for six to eight minutes until the eggs are of desired doneness. And then you can season the eggs with salt and pepper and garnish with parsley. That's interesting. And over here is a blueberry smoothie bowl. So for this you need a kiwi, frozen blueberries, Greek yogurt, raspberries, and granola. You can replace the Greek yogurt with almond or coconut yogurt to make this bowl dairy-free. Easter Buffet. Easter is busy with egg hunts in church, so the meal needs to be fuss Free. This menu, complete with glazed ham, can be prepped in advance. So on the menu, Caesar deviled eggs, cheddar chive cheese puffs, salad with smoked salmon and rye croutons, honey and ginger glazed ham, Yukon gold and sweet potato gratin. Gratin, gratin, <laughs> I don't know how to say that, I'm sorry. Poached green beans with green olive vinaigrette and strawberry lemonade layer cake. Here's a make ahead cheat sheet that they give you to tell you how to prep the meal ahead of time, starting all the way from a week before Easter. Okay, here's a picture of the cheddar chive cheese puffs as an appetizer. 
along with the deviled eggs. Here is the salad with smoked salmon and rye croutons. This Scandinavian inspired salad features two of the region's favorites, smoked salmon and rye bread. Here is the honey and ginger glazed ham. Let's see, it says cooking an uncut bone in or boneless ham. While spiral cut ham is very convenient, your family's tradition might be boneless or bone in. With either, you can use our recipe, but note that the cooking time will vary. The meat should be cooked to 145 degrees and always check the internal temperature with a thermometer. And this over here says opt for a bone-in ham and use the bone later to add rich, smoky flavor to soup or a pot of beans. And there's the recipe. some of the side dishes. Yukon gold and sweet potato gratin, gratin. This is the perfect make-ahead dish. It takes just as, oh sorry, it tastes just as good the next day as it does right out of the oven. And here we have poached green beans with green olive vinaigrette simmering green beans in stock adds rich flavor to this simple side. And here are both of the recipes. So let's see which one should we read. I like both of them. <laughs> let's read about the potatoes. This creamy, dreamy potato side dish is seasoned with fragrant rosemary and sage. So for this you need two cups of fat-free, half and half, or get the fat kind, because that kind tastes really good. Two tablespoons of butter, one tablespoon of dried sage, one tablespoon of fresh rosemary, one tablespoon minced garlic, quarter teaspoon of salt, one and a half pounds of Yukon gold potatoes, one and a half pounds of sweet potatoes, some cooking spray, and one and a half cups of shredded Gruyere cheese. So you preheat the oven to 400. And then in a medium pot, add the half and half, butter, sage, rosemary, garlic, and salt. Season with pepper. Heat to a simmer on medium high and then remove from the heat. Meanwhile, peel the potatoes. Using a mandolin or a food processor, cut the sweet potatoes into... Um, one eighth inch thick slices yes. and do the same with the Yukon Golds. Coat a baking dish with cooking spray. Arrange the arrange half of the potatoes in a layer. Top with half of the half and half mixture and cheese. Repeat with the remaining potatoes, half and half, and cheese. Cover with foil and bake for 30 minutes. Remove the foil and bake until potatoes are tender and top is golden brown for 30 minutes. Let's stand for 15 minutes before serving or cool it completely and refrigerate up to one day. 
cover it with foil and reheat it in 375 degree oven until hot in the center. Desserts. Let's see, this is a strawberry lemonade layer cake, and there's a video online that you can watch. Here's a chef tip for bakery worthy results fully cool the cake before frosting and layering. It's pretty with the lemons on top. recipe for the cheddar chive cheese puffs and the strawberry lemonade layer cake. Kids cook. Um, so this is a, an easy family activity that requires food coloring and other ingredients that you probably have on hand. This is a marbling technique that relies on the fat from butter clinging to the egg so the dye can't. That's another way to do it. I did this in a video with uh, whipped cream so I wonder if it's the same kind of technique. Mm, looks a little different. So let's see, for this you need a cup of water, two teaspoons of white vinegar, ten drops of food coloring, one tablespoon of melted butter, hard boiled eggs, and a slotted spoon. So what you do is, in a small bowl, you stir together the water, vinegar, food coloring, and butter. Use a slotted spoon and dunk the egg into the bowl a few times and then completely submerge the egg for four to five minutes, adding a bit more water to cover the egg if needed. Then you remove the egg and gently pat with a paper towel to dry and remove any excess butter mixture. Oh, that's cool. Um, for a two-tone effect, after patting the marbled egg dry, repeat steps two and three in a bowl of contrasting color mixture of water, food coloring, vinegar, and butter. I'll have to try that maybe next year. They look very pretty. Coffee cake muffins. These crumb topped treats taste bakery fresh just in time for National Coffee Cake Day on April 7th. <laughs> we have a day for everything, I think. So these ones here are blueberry coffee cake muffins. And there's a video. And here's some tips for muffin mastery. It says, don't overmix. The more you work, the better. The more gluten, which is the protein in the wheat, develops, which makes muffins tough. Make streusel ahead. Whip up a double batch of streusel and freeze it in the resealable bag so you can make bakery-worthy muffins anytime. Toss berries in flour. Uh, before you add fruit to batter, toss in flour so it doesn't sink to the bottom of the muffins. Okay. Quick 
spring suppers, 15 minutes. Thanks to the nuts and cheese, this vegetarian dish has 20 grams of protein per serving. So this must have leeks. This is whole grain spaghetti with leeks and peas. Creamy and tangy goat cheese brings all the flavors of spring together in this simple pasta dinner. So let's see, for this one you need 12, 12 ounces of whole grain spaghetti, 8 ounces of fresh shelled peas or 2 cups of frozen peas thawed, 1 medium leek, a quarter cup of olive oil, four ounces of soft goat cheese, quarter cup of chopped walnuts, and a quarter cup of fresh basil leaves. So first you cook the spaghetti according to the package directions. Two minutes before the pasta is al dente, add the peas to the boiling water, reserving a half a cup of the cooking water before draining. Meanwhile, trim, halve, and thinly slice the leek. In a 12-inch skillet, heat the oil on medium-high, add the leek, and season with salt and pepper, and cook for 8 minutes until golden, stirring often. Then you drain the spaghetti and the peas and toss with leek and reserved cooking water. Season with salt and pepper to taste and divide among four bowls and crumble the goat cheese on top. Garnish with walnuts and basil. Leek prep. This sweet and mild member of the onion family needs to be rinsed thoroughly before using. Them look delicious. So this one over here, this is steak and bok choy over rice noodles. And this one is spicy shells with sausage and kale. It says cooking the noodles and bok choy together saves time and means fewer dishes. And for this one, kale adds nutrients to this easy one-pot meal. And here are the two recipes. This one over here is a chicken fajita rice bowl. Also looks very good. It says, pre-cut veggies and store-bought guacamole make this dish weeknight friendly. Let's see this one for steak and bok choy over rice noodles. Quick cooking rice noodles soak up gingery dressing and form the perfect base for juicy grilled steak in this light meal. So for this you need a 12 ounce boneless strip steak, one pound baby bok choy, one eight ounce box of thin rice noodles, half a cup of organic citrus ginger dressing, and a half a cup of french fried crispy onions. So you heat a large covered pot of water to uh, boil on high. You heat a grill pan on high or grill on medium high. Pat the steak dry and dress, oh, oh no, sorry, and season with salt and pepper. Grill for four minutes per side for medium or until desired doneness. Meanwhile, chop the bok choy into one inch pieces and rinse well. Remove pot of water from heat. Stir the noodles and bok choy into the hot water. 
Cover and let stand for three minutes until the noodles are tender and drain well. And the last steps is in a large bowl, add the dressing, add cooked noodles and bok choy and toss until combined and arrange in a serving platter. Then you thinly slice the steak and serve on top. Garnish with the crispy onions. Sounds good. one here. What's this one? Looks very good. This is um, pan-seared salmon cakes over greens. And here's the recipe for chicken fajita rice bowl. This one looks very simple. The food processor makes quick work of salmon allowing you to get these crispy cakes on the table in no time. And here's some snack meals, fresh energy boosters. So it says when the afternoon slump hits you hard, these fruit and veggie based snacks, which are all under 300 calories, will keep you going. It says over here these are banana chocolate peanut bites. Sounds really good. Keep a stash of these in the freezer for a quick cool treat. So for this you need a half of a banana sliced, drizzled with half an ounce of melted dark chocolate, and sprinkled with two tablespoons of finely chopped peanuts and then frozen. So bananas, it says, besides offering an instant energy boost, bananas provide fiber to help you feel full. And then the dark chocolate. Dark chocolate offers the antioxidant benefit of cocoa without too much sugar. And lastly, the salted peanuts. It says using salted peanuts balances the sweetness of chocolate and enhances its flavor. That looks great. And here we have mini peppers stuffed with guacamole. So for this you need some mini sweet peppers. Sweeter, but just as crunchy as bell peppers. These minis are great for snacking and can be eaten whole. And then you can get a container of this already made guacamole. Even though guacamole really isn't very hard to make. Um, chips might be standard, but when it comes to afternoon snacking, you'll get more out of this creamy dip by pairing it with fresh peppers. So you need eight mini peppers, halved and seeded, filled with a half a cup of prepared guacamole. That's it. The fiber and good for you fat in avocado make these filling. Let's see. Is that cedar? Is that how you say that? that celebrates spring. Sorry, I don't know how to pronounce some of these words. With traditional dishes, including brisket and kugel, kugel, this Passover menu features all your favorites made lighter and brighter thanks to seasonal herbs and produce. And on the menu for this this um, meal here, crispy potato, green onion, kugel, cucumber, cabbage, salad with lemon dill vinaigrette, slow cooker brisket with red wine glaze, sauteed radishes with mint, and an apple berry tart with cinnamon walnut Here is 
is the crispy potato green onion kugel. Okay, so it says fresh dill adds bright spring flavor to this crunchy salad. Slow cooker brisket with red wine glaze. The secret to tender brisket is hands off slow cooking. Perfect for Passover. This melt in your mouth brisket is braised in red wine, then finished under the broiler for a sticky sweet glaze. Here is the recipes for the potato dish and the salad. We'll read about the salad. This simple and refreshing side is a delicious accompaniment to rich meat or other heartier main dishes. So for this you need two English cucumbers, one small red cabbage, one a half of a package of chives, chopped, third of a cup of olive oil, a quarter cup of red wine vinegar, three tablespoons of lemon juice, a half a cup of chopped dill, and one and a half teaspoons of sugar. So you have the cucumbers lengthwise and thinly slice core and very thinly slice the cabbage. To a large bowl add the cucumbers, cabbage, and chives. In a small bowl whisk together the oil, the vinegar, the lemon juice, the dill, and the sugar. Season with salt and pepper to taste. And then you add the dressing to the vegetables and toss to combine. Cover and refrigerate at least four hours or up to overnight. Here's a little note about um, kosher for Passover. If your family is keeping kosher for Passover, it's important to buy ingredients specifically labeled kosher for Passover, including vinegar, wine, potato starch, cinnamon, and baking powder. Items simply marked kosher are not necessarily kosher for Passover. And here we have the sautéed radishes with mint. a video for this dessert online. This is the apple berry tart with cinnamon walnut crust. Instead of flour, this dessert's crisp crust relies on toasted walnuts and matzo meal for structure. Tart berries and sweet apples join forces for a delectable fruity filling. And as for radishes, it says don't be afraid to cook radishes. Sauteing mellows their sharp flavor and makes them more tender. And down here, the matzo meal. Use pre-ground matzo in crumble toppings, cakes, or breading for chicken. And here's gluten-free recipes. These chewy cookies are naturally gluten-free and get a welcome savory punch from salted cashews. So here's a recipe for coconut cashew macaroons. It says satisfy your sweet tooth with these coconut treats. Swap out cashews for almonds or walnuts for a different spin. 
to keep these kosher for Passover, omit the extracts. Instead, scrape vanilla seeds straight from a fresh pod and beat them in along with the sugar. So for this, the prep time is 15 minutes, cook time 25 minutes, ready in 40. Serves 40. So for this, you need a half a cup of roasted salted cashews, a 14 ounce bag of sweetened flake coconut, three tablespoons of sweetened condensed milk, one teaspoon of vanilla extract, half a teaspoon of almond extract, four large egg whites at room temperature, and ten tablespoons of granulated sugar. So you preheat the oven to 325, line a baking sheet with parchment, and then in a food processor, pulse the cashews until finely chopped. In a medium bowl, combine the coconut, cashews, condensed milk, vanilla extract, almond extract, and in another bowl, with a hand mixer or stand mixer, whisk the egg whites on medium until soft peaks form. Gradually beat in the sugar until medium peaks form. Gently fold the egg whites into the coconut mixture. With, su with scoop or tablespoon measure, scoop the mixture onto the lined baking sheet, spacing one inch apart. Bake for 20 to 25 minutes until golden brown. Leaving the macaroons on parchment, pull sheet onto wire rack to cool completely. Cook more from less. Every week you end up with a fridge full of odds and ends that often go to waste. Turn the page for tips on how to turn scraps into crowd-pleasing dinners. Mm, shrimp and veggie fried rice. Create your own fried rice. You need one cup of flavor base, onion, green onion, leeks, and or shallot, four to five cups of veggies, bell pepper, mushroom, carrot, broccoli, cauliflower, spinach, and or kale, eight to 12 ounces of protein, either shrimp, ham, bacon, ground pork, and or ground chicken. So, what you do is you finely chop one medium onion, small bell pepper, eight ounces of mushrooms, and one and a half cups of broccoli. Pat 12 ounces of peeled, deveined shrimp dry. In a deep 12 inch skillet, heat two tablespoons of vegetable oil on medium high. Add the shrimp and cook for two minutes until browned. Transfer to a bowl. And then in the same skillet, add the onion and bell pepper. Cook for two minutes, stirring often. Reduce the heat to medium and add the mushrooms and broccoli. Then you add a quarter cup of water and season with a quarter teaspoon of salt. Cover and cook for three minutes until the broccoli is tender stirring occasionally. Then you stir in three cups packed fresh spinach until wilted, and you increase the heat to high. Then add two tablespoons of reduced sodium soy sauce, four cups of cooked rice, and add the shrimp. Cook for three minutes until the rice is hot, stirring constantly. Season with salt to taste. So 
So this one over here looks really good too. This is a Tuscan bread and veggie stew. Create your own soup combo. You need three to four cups of veggies, like leek, shallot, carrot, celery, and or parsnips. Three tablespoons of flavor base, like garlic, thyme, and or rosemary. Plus four cups of greens, like kale, spinach, and or chard. So for this one, you chop two carrots and two stalks of celery. Chop one medium leek and thoroughly soak and rinse to remove the grit. In a 12 inch skillet, heat two tablespoons of olive oil on medium. Add the leek, carrots, and celery. Two smashed and peeled garlic cloves and two teaspoons of fresh thyme. Cook for eight minutes until the leeks are tender, stirring occasionally. Transfer to slow cooker bowl along with four cups of packed, chopped, fresh kale, three cups of vegetable broth, two cups of torn, stale, crusty bread, and two cans of cannellini beans drained and rinsed. Season with salt and pepper. Cover and cook on high for three hours until the bread has completely fallen apart. Serve topped with one quarter cup of shaved parmesan. I like that one. Here's some spaghetti with veggie marinara sauce. Create your own spin on marinara. So you need two to three cups of a flavor base like onion, shallot, carrot, celery, fennel, and or bell pepper. And then you need two to three cups of veggies like zucchini, summer squash, and or eggplant. It says transform a can of tomatoes with any veggie left in the fridge. Voila, pasta night. five ways to use foil, plastic wrap, and plastic bags. Number one, protect plants. Keep frost away from outdoor plants by covering them with large plastic bags at night. Here it says reduce waste and make household tasks easier with our tips for giving kitchen supplies a second life. Number two, avoid freezer burn. Keep ice cream creamy by sealing containers in a large plastic bag. Number three, cushion breakables. Give used plastic bags a second life by inflating and using as packing material. Number four, prevent leaks. Skip messy suitcase spills when traveling by placing plastic wrap under the cap of toiletries, like shampoo and conditioner. And this, this foil technique also works wonders on grill grates. Use the foil to clean cast iron. Keep cast iron in tip-top condition with leftover foil. Wipe away any oil or grease with a paper towel, then use a wad of foil. Grab it with tongs to scrub off any stubborn, stuck-on food. Tea, it's one of the most popular beverages on the planet. So how tea is grown and produced can have a significant impact on the environment. Giant brand tea is Rainforest Alliance certified. When you see the frog seal, you can be rest assured the product was sustainability farmed 
and the farmers have committed to improved livelihood for the laborers as well as fair wages and a commitment to conserving natural resources. Chocolate. Chocolate is made with cocoa grown in the tropics. So sustainability is about protecting the environment and powering the farmers and the local community. While there's no single measure of sustainability, there are useful labels to seek out. Look for the Fair Trade Certified, Rainforest Alliance Certified, or the UTS Certified Seal. And down here, coffee. Let's see. Nature's Promise Coffee is Fair Trade Certified, and Giant Brand Coffee is UTS Certified. The Fair Trade Certified Seal represents products that help improve millions of lives while protecting land and waterways. You can feel good when you see the UTS certification because it means the farmers, workers, and their families are given the best treatment, education, and health care. a section about asking experts for advice from our nutritionists. How can I reduce waste? And these tips are before you shop, take stock of what you have at home and make a list of only what you'll use in a week. Until cut, keep these on your counter. Peaches, citrus, avocado, bananas, tomatoes, potatoes, garlic, and winter squash. Use leftover veggies and veggie scraps to make broth. These are best refrigerated. Cauliflower, cucumbers, leafy greens, Brussels sprouts, broccoli, apples, berries, peppers, asparagus, carrots, mushrooms, and grapes. But don't wash them until you're ready to use them. And lastly here, before they spoil, freeze fruit like sliced bananas or berries for future smoothies. Three meals for ten dollars each. All right, so let's see. Uh, these are three meals for ten dollars each. Um, these fast, flavor-packed meals offer so much supper time satisfaction, you'll forget they're super affordable. This one looks really good also. This is a salad of green beans, tuna, radishes, and pickled onions. Mmm, tostadas make the most of inexpensive pantry staples like beans and tortillas. So this is a recipe here for macaroni with ham and peas. It says cook the pasta, peas, and cauliflower in one pot for faster prep and fewer dishes. It says the kids won't notice the finely chopped cauliflower, which adds nutrients and fiber to this weeknight twist on mac and cheese. So here's the recipe for the salad with green beans, tuna and radishes, and pickled onions. As 
this bright and fresh salad gets a punch of flavor from quickly pickled onions and an easy breezy lemon dressing. Prep time is 10 minutes, cook time 7 minutes, ready in 17 minutes, and it serves 4. So for this you need a quarter cup of distilled white vinegar, one tablespoon of sugar, a half a teaspoon of salt, one half a small red onion, a 12 ounce package of frozen steam ready extra fine green beans, a half of a 16 ounce bag of radishes, two 5 ounce cans of chunk light tuna in water, two tablespoons of lemon juice, three tablespoons of olive oil, and one 5 ounce bag of spring mix. So, step one in a small pot, combine the vinegar, quarter cup of water, sugar and salt, heat on medium until the sugar dissolves, stirring occasionally, and remove from heat. And then step two, thinly slice the onion and add to the pot, stir to combine, and let stand. Step three, microwave the green beans according to the package directions. When cool enough to handle, chop into bite-sized pieces, thinly slice the radishes, and drain the tuna. And then for step four, in a large bowl, whisk together the lemon juice, olive oil, season with salt and pepper to taste, and then to the bowl add the spring mix, green beans, radishes, and tuna. Drain the onion and pat dry with a paper towel and add to the bowl and toss to combine. Per serving, that one is 215 calories, 11 grams of fat, 2 grams of saturated fat, and This one, no fryer is needed when cooking, spray and a hot oven can do the trick for these super crunchy corn tortillas topped with a mixture of seasoned beef and hearty refried beans. cooker. It says, got a multi-cooker? You may know it is, oh, you may know it as an instant pot. You can saute and pressure cook this stew in just 30 minutes. This is a spring chicken stew. Looks very good. Uh, let's see, spring chicken stew with leeks and white wine. Sweet leeks and white wine make this simple dish special enough for a get-together. So for this dish, you need three medium leeks, one tablespoon olive oil, two medium carrots, thinly sliced, two tablespoons of flour, three-quarter cup of white wine, half a cup of low-sodium chicken broth, four sprigs fresh thyme, one and a half pounds of golden potatoes quartered, one and a half pounds of boneless, skinless chicken thighs, and two cups of frozen peas thawed. So in the first step, you trim the roots and darkest green from the leeks. Thinly slice the leeks and submerge in a large bowl of water. Swish and separate rings to release the grit. Drain and submerge, and swish in water again, and drain well. In a multi-cooker or electric pressure cooker, heat the oil on the saute function. Add leeks and carrots. 
Cook until golden for five minutes, stirring occasionally. Stir in the flour, add the white wine, chicken broth, thyme, and potatoes, and season with salt and pepper. Top with the chicken. Seal and set to high pressure. Cook for 10 minutes. Let pressure release naturally for 10 minutes. And then press quick release button. Stir in the peas and let sit for 2 minutes. Remove and discard thyme stems. Season with salt and pepper to taste. And then you could garnish with parsley. Simple swap. Out of white wine, use the same amount of chicken broth and a squeeze of lemon juice instead. So it says uh, many of these recipes are available online. SavoryOnline.com Different articles online And in the next issue that I haven't uh, haven't gone to Giant in a little while, so I don't know if I missed this one, but these all look really good. It's the fun issue. I wonder if they still have it available. These little colored noodles here. From Cinco de Mayo and Cooking Clubs to a kid's kitchen takeover. This issue is loaded with fun. And that one includes um, the kids kitchen takeover it says little ones can make and eat each of these simple creative recipes um, celebrate mom Picnic that kids can make with just a little help from dad. 15 minute grilling. Kick off outdoor cooking season with quick meals. In season, strawberries. This sweet, juicy berry stars in sweet and savory dishes. And then celebrate Cinco de Mayo. Five ingredient recipes for a fun holiday. Fiesta. And the index. And that's it. So, it's nice. A lot of good recipes in there. for watching.